It's Thursday, May 25th, 2017. I'm Jason Dehoff, and on today's episode of HVTV, we'll see a feature about tiny house living, a feature from last year to prepare Hillview for the decades dance, and to finish it off, an inspirational hawk squawk. Ready or not, HVTV starts now. Do you ever feel like you do not have enough space to live a comfortable life? Well, imagine picking up and moving into a tiny house. That's the whole family moving into 284 square feet of living space. Dylan Monahan is a seventh grader here at Hillview, but lives in a very unique place. I am Dylan Monahan, and I live in a 284 square foot mini house with five people and one dog. When we visited, Dylan was kind enough to give us a tour of his house. So here's our full plants kitchen right here. And then here is the dining room where we eat. Here's my bedroom right here, full size bedroom with TV and a fireplace. And then up here is where both my sisters sleep. It's up on a loft. And then number two is right up there. And then over here, here's the bathroom, full appliance bathroom. Dylan's family moved into the mini house while their new house was being built. We were looking obviously for a place to stay while the house is being rebuilt. And we of course live in Menlo Park, which is one of the most expensive areas to live in in, in the country. So yeah, the rents are a little bit outrageous if you're going to go rent a house for a year. So that was one of the reasons we started looking at alternatives. Dylan's family actually wanted an RV and a guest house too. We actually wanted an RV that we could travel with. Everybody's seen the RV show and a bunch of others. Oh yeah. We were thinking it'd be, it'd be great to have something like that. And we also wanted a guest house on our property. It turns out it wasn't Dylan's dad's idea at all. It was actually our son Dylan and my wife Heidi that started looking at alternatives and they both sort of happened to pr across these tiny houses on the, te the television shows and they started comparing some notes and before we oh, knew wow. we were negotiating with 12 different companies and eventually just two but we, we needed a, a guest house, we needed an RV to travel in and we needed a place to live while we were building the new house. Next up, we asked Dylan's family members about what makes the tiny house so special. Ironically, the tiny house has everything that we need in it. A dining room, three bedrooms, full-size kitchen, bathroom. My favorite part of the mini house would be the small bedroom because it has the TV, the blankets, and the dog. Although Dylan and his family are excited about their new house being built, the mini house provides a truly unique experience. I'm Oliver Kahn with photojournalist Dylan Monahan. Signing off. Thanks, Oliver and Dylan, for that huge story. Next up, we have a behind the scenes video from last year's Decade Stamps. <laughs> The Decade Stances have been around for many years, and many generations of 8th graders have done them. What most people don't know about it is all the hard work the 8th graders put into them. We went behind the scenes to find out. I've taught the Decades many years ago, and then Katie Deander, who's a student of, was a student of mine, she asked me to come back, and so I'm helping her out here. Even though Miss Deander is Hillview's dance teacher, she is not in fact the teacher of these dances. We went to ask the teachers why they came to teach these dances. I wanted to come teach the Decades because one, it's a really fun experience, and two, I went to Hillview, and I was part of the Decades, and it was probably one of my favorite things to do in eighth grade. The eighth graders have put a lot of effort into these dances, but we wanted to know what their favorite parts were. My favorite part of the dances is the music, because I really like the 70s music. Learning all the steps and being able to talk with everyone, just be social the entire time, not really having to be super strict about it, but it's still fun to be with everyone. One of the purposes of the dances is to help students learn about the different decades. I think it's something that we're not exposed to on a daily basis, so it's kind of fun to go back and kind of 
you know, feel the different decades. I'm sure kids don't listen to this kind of music on a regular basis, so I think it does teach them. For these students, there are many challenging parts of the dance, such as remembering the steps. At the beginning, it was relatively simple because there were only a few, but it was actually really challenging to remember all the steps. The most challenging was learning, at, learning the dances at first. Both the students and teachers can learn from these dances. We asked both of them exactly what they do learn. They learn about the different music and the different styles, and maybe they see something familiar in each dance that they're currently doing now. Based upon the music, what people were really interested in that, and during the time period, what really people enjoyed listening to, you can really learn what people wore, which is fun to at dance when they were dancing, which is fun to know. These dances have been around for many years with a lot of hard work that goes into them from both the teachers and the students. For HVTV, I'm reporter Abby Sutton with photojournalist Anthony Santoro. Thanks for that great feature. Now it's time for a very special hawk squawk. Josh, Jack, and I went out to ask a very important question. Who is your real life hero? Let it roll. My superhero in life is my cousin Ian Harks because he is the best college soccer player officially as of last year and um, he has really good grades. My superstar is Kristen Wiig because uh, she worked for where she is and her acting skills and improv skills. She's a really good role model. She's just so good. My dad because he is always away, constantly working for my family. So I admire him and I admire his work. Um, I would say my sister, not my brother, because she like inspires me and she's really nice to me, not my brother. <laughs> So my superhero would be my mom, probably because she always understands me. She takes things that are meant to be taken lightly, lightly, and and I don't know, she's just always there for me. I would say my sister because she's an inspiration to me, and whenever we go to the movies, it's fun, so yeah. So my superhero in life would be my mom, um, after being pregnant. I totally understand how hard it is and props to all the moms out there. Thanks for that very inspirational video. Well, that's it for today's episode, Hawks. On behalf of everybody on the Hawk Talk News team, make it a great day or not, the choice is always yours.